All right, we're talking about temptation and the fruitfulness of temptation and their usefulness. The, and we said the first thing is that they cancel out the stains of sins. A temptation which is sustained and overcome with courage and perseverance is a continual penance and very meritorious. And because of this is very efficacious with regard to the removal of the stains of sin. The second advantage is that it humiliates us. In Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 verse 5, it says, For gold and silver are tried in the fire, but acceptable men in the furnace of humiliation. Just persons sustained by the Holy Ghost arrive at the most sublime virtues and then advance all the way to ecstasy. But in order that pride not at times overcome them, it is beneficent, it is the beneficent disposition of God that temptations come in order to make them remember their own misery. As St. Paul says, precisely what happened to him by the counsel of God. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, And lest the greatness of the revelations should exalt me, there was given to me a sting of my flesh, an angel of Satan to buffet me. So they humiliate us. The third advantage is that it purifies us. Fire purifies everything, and temptation is compared by sacred scripture and by the fathers to fire because of the special quality which is in it to purify the body, the soul, the heart, the works, and the thoughts. So being victorious in a temptation makes the will stronger with regard to the love of God. So in that sense, it's a purification. It also detaches the will more from sin and the causes of sin. Every time there's a victory in temptation. The fourth advantage is that temptation keeps us alert and vigilant. For as long as the enemy is far away, the soldier puts down his weapons and sleeps. However, if the enemy is close, he stays awake with his weapons. And temptations show us that the enemy is at the door, and therefore we must remain awake. Water which remains stagnant becomes putrid. That water which is agitated and running remains healthy. In the same way, temptations make a man active, attentive, with regard to himself and with regard to those things which are around him and stimulate him to prayer to mortify himself, and to have recourse to God. St. John Chrysostom said, Temptations have the purpose of rousing us from our sleep and making us more fervent and pious. The fifth advantage is that temptations reinforce and preserve virtue. St. Gregory said, the best guardian of virtue is infirmity, either of tribulations or of temptations. The elect, he says, make progress in temptation. And what the devil prepares for their ruin, God converts into their glory.
So God makes sure that temptation, instead of harming us, is changed into a stimulus for the purpose of advancing in virtue, grace, victory, and as a help to glory. No temptation was ever overcome except by means of the opposite virtue. For this reason, he who resists temptation progresses in virtue and therefore increases in grace, in the crown, and in glory. For this reason, St. Paul, after he said that he prayed continuously to the Lord to liberate him from the sting of the flesh, from the angel of Satan which was buffeting him, received a response that the grace of God was sufficient to him because strength is made stronger in weakness. And this is the quote from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for power is made perfect in infirmity. Gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may dwell in me, for which cause I please myself in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am powerful. In Ecclesiasticus chapter 27, verse 6, it says, The furnace trieth the potter's vessels, and the trial of affliction just men. Virtue withers if it has no adversary. The soldier is weak in time of peace. He becomes courageous, perhaps even to the point of heroism, if he has the occasion to do frequent battle. The temptations of impurity, of gluttony, and of pride, and similar temptations in the souls of the faithful who resist them, augment and confirm purity, sobriety, humility, and charity, and other virtues. There is nothing that makes the just soul rejoice more, St. Cyprian says, than the preservation of purity and the other virtues in the midst of temptations. To overcome temptation is the sweetest pleasure that the soul can taste. That's St. Cyprian. There is no victory, he says, greater than that which one has over his own passions. The sixth advantage is that the, it, it, it forms the heart in virtue. It exercises the faculties of the soul. And it rekindles the love of God. Just as the courageous soldier desires battle in order to prove his courage and loyalty and in order to obtain a glorious victory, riches, promotions, and fame, so the just man who desires temptation desires, like the good soldier, war 
from which to emerge victorious by the grace of God. He seeks battle in which, by the help of God, he is certain to knock down his enemy. He wants an occasion in which to demonstrate to God his loyalty. St. Leo says, The acts of virtue have no value without the proofs of temptation. There is no faith without a test. There is no battle without an enemy. And no victory without a fight. He who wants to have solid virtue must fight for it. St. Leo the Great. The seventh advantage is that temptation renders us worthy of God. In Wisdom chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, it says, Afflicted in a few things, in many they shall be well rewarded. Because God hath tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he hath proved them, and as a victim of a holocaust he hath received them, and in time there shall be respect had to them. The just shall shine and shall run to and fro like sparks among the reeds. That's um, an epistle from one of the commons of martyrs. St. Augustine says, support, O faithful, the furnace, in order that being purged of the filth, you might be able to appear without stain. In the furnace, there is straw, there is gold, there is fire. When the fire comes, the fire burns, and the gold is purified. This is all St. Augustine. The straw is consumed and is reduced to ashes. The gold remains purged of all dross. The furnace is the world. The wicked are the straw. The good are the gold. And the fire is temptation. And God is the goldsmith. I do that which the goldsmith wants. He places me in the crucible, and I adapt myself to it. He orders me to have patience while he makes me bright and purifies me. St. Augustine. And St. Cyprian said, The Lord is he who brings battle, and it is he who fights, and it is he who triumphs, and it is to you that he leaves the merit of the victory. Your war is a war of God. You battle, your, your battle is a battle of Jesus Christ. Why do you fear? Because you are in doubt, as if you had to be victorious through your own strength? Take up arms, go to war, fight as strong men, so that he who, who is never defeated be with you. That's St. Cyprian in his epistle to the martyrs. He himself was eventually martyred. So that's the end of our spiritual conferences on temptation.